AS220 is a not-for-profit arts presenter, which is a completely unjuried but not unmanaged space. Its primary interest is to create and present the product of creative activity. When our bones snap, we see a flash of light. That's because we're electromagnetic. Well, it's critical for the community because AS220 is a totally unique organization. You know, it's this wonderful place that allows a variety of approaches to being an artist. And our society certainly needs more of that. Now, AS220 has been running itself, falling upwards for the past seven years. And we're in the black, and we can support and sustain the kind of programming that we do. Part of what's happening with AS220 is if they get to buy their building, then nobody can push them out, and that's really, really important. It had gone through the phase of being, hey, we're kind of here, and we're here, and now it's into the phase of, hey, we're here to stay. It's a box that we've built and put together with a group of artists to help us realize a building. Simply, it's a box. The prints come in a box, building box. Basically, it's that you're, you're getting some work by people who have national and international reputations. So what the box is, is a very finely made box that opens up kind of like a book. It's 19 by 24 inches with five prints. Four lithographs and one cibachrome print. It's using art to ensure the future of art. There's nothing to allow the imagination to run as wild as security. Building box, we're using it to help us buy a building. This box has five very individual voices in it. The most recent group of work has been referential to implements, the figure, uh, and vessels in a kind of melding of them. This particular form is tried to embody gender, both genders, male and female. I'm going to do my drawings, and Herb, is going to, Herb Fox is going to come down, and um, we're just going to try some different things. So that's what we're going to do. So what we need is a kind of resin. Well, let's go take a walk. How long? It's such a cute. I'm hungry, right? These are the rejects right here. Oh, okay. These, two, these are okay. <laughs> oh, great. They came out good, huh? Yeah. Great. <laughs> okay. How do you do this, though? I'm a painter and a printmaker, and, and I do both about equally. I spend about equal time on both. One of the things I've eliminated in, in my work is gravity. Everything in my work just flies around in the space that it was put in. I use a lot of body parts that are not classical body parts. For example, you won't see torsos in my work, you know, like Michelangelo, and you won't see... I'm just not interested in that. I'm really interested in things like fingers, thumbs, um, heads, but usually my heads are just globes, mouths and tongues and teeth and eyes. Um, 
I've been doing work that's um, really based on putting body parts together in unorthodox ways to make kind of beings that actually then make a point that I want to make. The piece I made for the box um, is right in this tradition and, and um, there's a, a sort of blabbering uh, globe with a mouth, a big mouth and an and a eye and then there's a big finger coming out of the head and it's, it's very phallic looking. I'm totally... Something within the space and the light would be like a magnet and that magnet would attract a kind of thought. And I work with like um, eucalyptus pods and, and tiger lilies. And by, by really using the lines within the, the, the images to, to lift up, some of them lift up and come to the surface like an abstract pattern, and some of them to be combined to make the object. This is called eucalyptus, and it's, I think it's 11 inches by 23, and since I usually work like five by seven feet, it's quite a change too. And I think it's really thoughtful, and you know, and really, like I said, meditative, and us, and it's slightly disbalanced on purpose, which is sort of unconventional for a lithograph, and that disbalance gives it a kind of an edginess too. A constant theme that, that moves through the work is one that has to do with the confrontation between the past and the present and how those things in terms of time and space, when juxtaposed, you can in some way foreshadow the future. A lot of it is, is instantaneous discovery and response. I work with panels that abut one another, and the print's very much about that. It's two visual situations that come together and overlap. It's an image that I wanted to be very immediate, and in its graphicness, be somewhat direct. For me, most of the physical work uh, takes place in the darkroom, uh, trying to get a print out of this negative. Uh, you might say it's kind of like the score is written in the negative, and then I've got to conduct the whole thing in the print. Certainly, for me, taking the picture is extremely Im important, and everything does begin there. But it is, at the same time, uh, simply a jumping off point for what the final uh, picture and image is going to look like. I spend most of my time um, working out details in uh, the printing stage of the, of the image. Uh, a lot of the color that you see in this picture and in my pictures uh, in general specifically comes out of the black and white photographic paper by means of a process of what, what we call selectively fogging of the print to light before it's been totally fixed. And I do that, and it is a, it's not unlike an alchemist at work, because many of the qualities uh, are very difficult to see until the whole process is finished. <laughs> 